Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Today, it is my pleasure and honor to present to you our first game of the GEST Dota 2 Challenge. I'm LD. I'm joined here today by Bulba, and right away, we'll let you talk because, well, we want to make sure the mic audio volumes are fixed. So, Sam, LGD International, and their debut performance for, for well, any English cast and tournament. Are you excited for this, buddy? Is your body ready? And you're muted because I forgot my volume. There you go. How you doing, Sam? Hi. 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 <laughs> Are you excited? Yes, I, I am excited. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think it is fixed now. Just reading the stream chat. Well, it's two minutes delays, guys. So that makes it a little bit harder. All right. So, Sam, LGD International and their debut performance. This is a team that... Uh, well, you told me you got to watch a few of their scrims. Obviously, you don't want to spill all the secrets, but as we look at this matchup, they did pretty well in the G League qualifiers. They did make their way into the main event for that, so they're you know sort of past the first test. How do you feel about this team? Do you think they can compete with Arj? And as we look at Arj, I should mention, they're not playing with Mushi. They actually have KYXY filling in for him. Uh, they do have Ice Ice Ice, but without Mushi, some would say it's not really the same Arj team, but I guess let's start by talking about LGD International. How do you feel about this team? Um, I definitely think that most people, they are kind of underestimating them, but uh, just recently and how I think their style is, I think they, have, they can surprise us a lot. Also, another thing is that Orange hasn't been exactly practicing much, and I know that LGD, has been, LGD International has been practicing a lot uh, with uh, IG and the other LGD team and DK, so I can't, I can't wait to see this. I mean, they're like the true definition of just going into a gaming house and totally just playing Dota. And they're on a Chinese team, so I, I can't wait to see how they do. Mm, I am reading the stream chat. Some people are saying I'm too quiet. Some are saying it's fine. Hopefully it's good. I'm continuing to lower you and raise me. It is 2 a.m. here, so I can't really go nuts with this cast. But uh, uh, hopefully it's better now. We'll see. Uh, LGD International, they're going to pick up an early Luna. This, is, this has been by far sort of their favorite carry, uh, for, at least from what I've been reading, from what I've been hearing, talking to Brax. Uh, and that was uh, as of, I guess, three or four weeks ago. It looks like that hasn't changed. They pick into it pretty early in the draft. Uh, a lot of teams don't let they enjoy Luna. We've seen other teams pick her, but this is a pretty early place to pick her up in the draft. Um, I actually I actually think Luna's a top three uh, pick and ban, at least in the Chinese scene right now. And I know that LGD loves Luna. I know PyCat loves the hero just because of how much control it gives you early game. You just have all this auras, and you have the aura, and you just go as five, and you push, and you take towers, and you put pressure, and it's a hero that can do that. And she has insane late game potential with a butterfly and uh, whatever. They go the tranquil boots, and then a BKB rush after the Aquila, so it's going to be interesting. And and a Chen pickup actually. So I know that um, LGD is international is actually one of the the only team right now in China that's actually picking jungle heroes. I know that IG doesn't pick jungles. I know that DK doesn't, and I know that um, the other LGD team no LGD team doesn't, so. All right, Sam, I'm hearing that you're a little bit... <laughs> this is so annoying. I'm sorry about the volume issues, guys. Something is wonky on my end. Don't yell at Sam. It's not his fault, but I did lower Skype a little bit. Hopefully that should fix it. We'll find out in two minutes, but the jungle, they pick it up and they pick it up early. Chen is a hero that, you know, generally... We've seen a band on from time to time, especially in that second round of bands, but they get their hands on them quickly. Orange... They go for the signature jungler as well. That'll be going to Extinct, most likely. And, and I'm curious for Orange, who's going to be playing what this game? I guess it'll be KYXY on the TA. Yamate, well, whatever Yamate wants to play, it hasn't been picked up yet. The Naga's still in the pool. The Chaos Knight's still in the pool. Got to say, out of the, t out of the two heroes that we're likely to see from him, uh, I, I definitely prefer the Naga. Seems like a hero that he's a lot more comfortable with. Um, yeah, so I agree with the Queen of Pain bands and the Night Starker. I know that Queen of Pain and Night Starker are like prominent um, solo mids right now in China. So I was actually pretty confused by the early Enigma pick. I, have, I, I don't know about that. I mean, it's a strong hero, but I, I haven't seen Orange pick that. Or maybe they have, but I know it's not that popular of a hero right now. Especially that early too, so I'm pretty surprised to see them pick it that early. Hmm. Tanker ban from Orange. This is... This is interesting. Has LGD been running this? Uh, I, I'm not sure. I think I know that G has played Tinker in the past. I'm not entirely sure about that. Who knows? The, the thing about that right now is LGD can still put Darkseer mid versus the, the TA. So I don't know for sure if what their mid hero is going to be. It, we're going to see on their next few picks. 
but um, Silver Bear is banned, so I know that uh, LGD Orange actually love playing Silver Bear. I know Ice 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 play Silver Bear a few games in the G G one games. And as, as for a carry right now, I think the only prominent carry right now is Void. There could be a Void pick. Oh, what? Wow, really? Uh, they didn't run out of time, so this was not a random. Alchemist. Yeah, Alchemist. <laughs> <laughs> I actually remember Zenith picked Alchemist Thoughts? in um Zenith picked Alchemist, Alchemist in during the group stages and they lost in TI I think TI two, but the hero has changed. I actually have not seen it at all in any like prominent competitive games, so it'll be quite entertaining. And I actually don't know how he. The thing about right now is they know that LGD is gonna go as five and push with the Chen and the Luna, so they kind of want something to stop the pushes and acid spray is quite good at stopping these like five man pushes who do you, if but on the, who do you think is going to be the final component if they're going for the push cuz they um, don't really have that i don't really see them having that much it's a luna and a ch i guess they the thing about the luna is really. regardless of what if you have heroes with the lunas and then the auras when the chen creeps you have insane push that's why actually why luna is so popular in china right now is cuz you just have like you just can pick any range hero and he gets what extra how much of her damage that the aura gives, and she has insane like burst potential with Eclipse. So if you just go push this five, and if they try and defend, you just Eclipse in. So we could see a Clockwork from LGD. I don't know for sure. I'm not entirely sure on that, but it's either a mid. It has to be a mid hero, or it has to be an off laner. So Darkseer can either go mid versus the TA, or it can be off lane. And I don't know if um, LGD inputs Darkseer mid. Versus TA, but we'd have to wait and see. Do they run the clock mid? Because I thought it was just something that Brax played in the off lane. Yeah, yeah. If if they pick clock, it's clock off lane and then Darkseer mid. Okay, versus the, versus Beastmaster. The TA. I forgot about that. So that's probably it's going to be a Beastmaster mid versus the TA. Totally forgot about that hero. Hmm. Um, Life Stealer Alchemist TA. This is this is quite. A uh, quite a single target kind of carry heavy lineup to say the least. I mean, like you mentioned, acid spray can be used to kind of counter push, but uh, this is this is a lot of heroes that need farm. I mean, even a hero like Enigma is not really that effective until he gets some jungle farm. I actually don't see much synergy in Orange's heroes. It just seems like a random TA and then a random and alchemist. And it's ice, ice, ice on the life I, I guess acid spray does minus armor and TA does minus armor. I, I actually have no idea, but. Yeah, and then the random nakes at the end. I was like, what? <laughs> and it's Ice 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 playing it. Is this an off lane nakes? This this should actually be a mid darks here, so I was right on that. And it's probably gonna be an off lane Beastmaster. So I, I don't think they would have sent Actually LGD they put the switcheroo, they switch they swapped players. Brax had picked Darkseer or Beastmaster in the loading screen. He's just switched. So it's gonna be an off lane Darkseer, I forgot. So awfully Darkseer, they're not gonna put. I thought they like you. I mean, like you mentioned, Darkseer mid versus TA. I think that's a better matchup than the Beastmaster, honestly. But the thing about uh, Darkseer versus a uh, Beast, you should be. I think you should actually look at the other way. Like, who would do better on the off lane? And I think Darkseer would do better on the off lane than Beastmaster. Beastmaster gets totally kept out of the lane with any support. It's like, and if you ward his Ancients, it's he just becomes null. And Beastmaster actually doesn't do that poorly versus TA. Even though you're gonna get out farmed and out CS, it's a hero that doesn't need as much farm, and you you do have roar, so he just needs levels. So apparently, people are saying they don't have you in Dota TV. I'm not sure if that's just you. Uh, let me try turning my threshold down. We'll just turn it down all the way to be safe. But yeah, Sam, try toggling your audio because apparently, people don't. I hear think it you. should be now. I th I think it should be now. I I didn't enable enable open mic, so that was my fault. Hopefully you're not 20 times louder than me, because <laughs> it seems like one of those days. All right, so on the side of LGD International, to properly introduce these guys, this is their the debut performance. Begins. This is the first team of Westerners to actually play on a squad in China, to live in a Chinese practice house, to, to really practice together under the, as a full team uh, in the same house, day-to-day, -day, living, breathing, and sleeping Dota. <laughs> <laughs> Ice 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 is doing the, the reddit trick actually with the courier in the jungle. <laughs> he makes a path there and then he like, he abuses the ancients. Okay, this is... 
I just saw this on Reddit actually a bit. All right. Well, I, I, I well anyone anyone much. who's read it will be familiar with it. But before this game gets too crazy. <laughs> okay. High cat on the Luna. 1437 on the support shadow demon. Looks like double jungle off the bat. They're not doing pulls. Maybe we're gonna see some early roams from them. Misery is gonna be playing that Chen. Solo mid we have G. God kill them all on the Beastmaster and the off lane. It's gonna be that Dark Seer handled by Brax. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't stop laughing. And I size size. He's he's sending the ancients in there and entrapping with with the courier. <laughs> Just watch it for a bit. He's gonna get the big dragon stuck there now, and he's gonna kill it. <laughs> this is so cheesy. Oh man. And he's is... failing. <laughs> he's failing. So it looks like he maybe just read the Reddit post and hasn't actually practiced it yet. <laughs> um, oh boy. Well, speaking of Arch, on the side of Arch, we have Ice 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 on the Lifestealer. Not a signature hero for him. Uh, certainly not on the suicide lane as an ancient jungler, but he's trying it anyway, damn it. No Mushi today. He won't be here, at least not for this match, but KYXY is going to be filling in. He'll be playing that solo mid TA. In the jungle, we have Extinct on one of his signature heroes, the Enigma, in that jungle. Uh, towards the bottom lane, we have Ice playing the Jakiro. He'll be doing some pulling and supporting the safe lane words. Yamate on the Alchemist, so a team with a TA and Alchemist, uh, as well as a Lifestealer. A rather greedy lineup, most would say, but they're trying to make it work with this cheeky nice. ancient jungle Eden. Well, he's got yeah. it going. This is kind of yeah, broken. Actually, I mean, he's doing a lot of damage just because of the feast, so this is actually pretty good. Uh, if you look at Orange X, Extent, he's actually in trouble, but gets out of there. Oh man, the centaur chasing him away, but this seems like a wild goose chase. In the end, they are going to back off. I actually love the lane, lane switch over here by um, L LGD, and they they saw that there's like, they saw that, they, they probably think right now Nakes is actually jungling. They don't know that he's doing this ancient trick. And they saw that it's just an alchemist and a DHD bottom. And Darkseer, they can't keep Darkseer out of the lane, so the problem right now is a DHD and an alchemist is a pretty bad lane, so they're going to abuse this with the and an enigma really can't help at all. So this Chen is going to be pretty, um, pretty influential in this jungle. And this is something we we were trying to talk about before all the sound issues. Is they have a very weak team in the laning stage. I mean, from Alchemist, especially going for this build where he goes for an unstable concoction. I guess expecting just the Darkseer bottom. Oh, Jakira gets caught. This will be a first blood. Pretty easy stuff. Now on Yamate, who might have gotten blocked by the illusions, narrowly going to avoid that. Oh man, Jungle Enigma, uh, Safe Lane Alchemist, really weak lanes, and they are being punished. I like what LGD has done, uh, and frankly, uh, I almost I thought they would have expected and just run, done it from the start, but it's a really good adjustment, and this is also going to put pressure on the Enigma, and in fact, he's just going to rotate top. He doesn't want to be anywhere near uh, this kind of aggression in his own jungle. Yeah, and uh, looking at mid, obviously TA is going to do better than the Beastmaster. So you were, can't really take anything, but G is still holding on. He's getting levels, which is what he needs. He's probably going to be a bottle crowing, just because that's how he's going to get farm. And he's going for one aura, and he's going to max axes, which is obviously the right thing to do. I thought maybe he'd go for two points to at least get the boar. It does help you a little bit versus TA, tower. just to kind of slow her down when she tower dives. He gives you a second source of damage, but... Yeah, he just I, wants I, to push I guess, the lane. But I guess, but also the thing about aura is... Also helps you CS quite a bit versus T. And the boar, if you if you played Beastmaster mid versus T, it actually doesn't help that much. Like you can just man up and just attack the boar, and it doesn't. I mean, you can take off refract charges, but I don't think it's that big. They still haven't found Ice Ice Ice, by the way. <laughs> He's still yeah. using this trick. He's getting a lot of experience. Well, if it's in the game, they're gonna use it. So this is up to Valve if they want to fix it. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I guess. I mean, the thing is. I don't know if he's farming faster here than in the jungle. I don't know. I guess can't really tell. Bottom tower I mean, he's going for treads top. first. He's probably he's probably farming faster here than in the jungle, but I guess Radiance it's like totally messing up their lanes. I think went. If you look at top, they're actually gonna try and gank Pycat. Top lane. Whoa! <laughs> he's gonna drop real fast. Great gank by Orange and well, Pycat being left on a bit of an Radiance island. Just all the pressure in the enemy jungle. Attack. Orange has done the smart thing. They've gotten the Enigma away from the aggressive Chen. They've gotten him away from the Shadow Demon. Rotate him up top, and well, Life Stealer's pretty safe. They do lose the Tier 1 bottom fairly early into this game, and now Brax can start to be really aggressive. 
And where do these heroes get their farm? Where do they get their levels? They need a lot of it, and not finding too much for the moment. Now Aurora onto Ice Ice Ice. They want to dive at the tower. This should be our second kill, maybe, or maybe not. He's getting all oh, the axes from G. What a nice set of axes. The drive-by then looking to escape. KYX by giving chase. Will he be able to, to find this kill? I don't think so. In fact, he looks to be in a lot of trouble. Brax chasing him. The Iron Shield just out of range. Has a surge. Will he go for this? No, in the end. He chooses to back off. That was a good movement there by Brax. I think if Brax wasn't there, G probably would have died because he is pretty low on HP. But that was actually a really nice uh, counter gank there by... Or not counter gank, but a good gank there by LGD International. I guess Ice 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 died too. So he's going to be pretty pretty under level right now. Or not really under level. I guess under level for Nakes. I mean, you don't really fear much about a level 4 Nakes at 6 minutes in. For the temple. Right, and even if he gets, even if he gets say, up to level 6, I mean, he, they still have heroes to deal with them. They've got Roar, they've got Demonic Purge, which goes through Rage. They've got Disruption if anyone gets initiated upon. Arch has a lot of single target, and I feel like LGD has the perfect lineup to counter that. For the most part you know all the abilities just are gonna shut down these aggressive gankers so somehow are just to fight a lot of farm and you mentioned the lgd wants to five man early wants to push early it's not a full five man yet but it is a lot of pushing the tier one's gonna drop mid and the map control continues to decrease they're gonna find brax top but really what can they do they don't have black hole yet he should be able to surge away and i think there is an eclipse there is not gonna cast it though two tiers tier one's down one to go oh the eclipse oh, nice. comes out Oh, extinct really is gonna be able to get away at the end oh or maybe not here comes 1437 once ice 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 charging in looking for that disruption roar to fly on ice 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 they want to bring him down first he will drop tons of burst damage then the axe is to clean up extinct really synchronized play from lgd using all their spells they're not overlapping at all they're not wasting stuns they're not wasting nukes just exactly what they need to get each kill yeah, and this is exactly what's going to happen i called at the beginning they're just going to go as five with the the chen creep the wild can give some good armor, and the beastmaster aura with the with the lunar aura as well. So I, I actually I don't I don't have no idea how uh, orange is gonna stop them. I mean they have like level five nakes right now with level three feast. The good and enigma news that's is, not even level six. The good news is they have acid spray. Oh wait, <laughs> they don't because yeah, Yamato's not have leveled. Acid <laughs> I guess he's gonna have to stun the creeps. Uh, you know, it's a little unconventional. It kind of makes sense, right? Because he thought Brax was going to be solo bottom. They probably could have gotten kills, but now it's Lifestealer who looks to be the dead one. He's going to... Oh, he's just going to die. <laughs> and this and is... the funniest thing about this, actually, DHD has just been farming bottom the entire game. He's actually up to 21 CS. Nax isn't even farming. He's just going around dying. And and the the ancients, the cheeky ancient tactics aren't going to work anymore with the Hawk, with these early towers dropping, they'll just have wards up. He'll never be able to farm those ancients like that again. Or if he does, it'll be very limited. Orange is just, this is just straight up getting out drafted. I mean, I don't think there's really anything they could have done with this lineup the way LGD is playing. In fact, they're going high ground, eight minutes in. Oh boy. Talk about a killer instinct. Yep. And they can easily five man this tower. Especially with the Luna Arc. At least do some damage. Not probably take it, but do some good damage. Yeah, force a lot of DPs back. Middle lane, just the TA pushing that one in. And the other benefit... That was basically like three seconds attacking, or like four seconds already got it to half. Yeah, so. Chen, Chen so creeps nice. plus the Luna Aura just and the Inner Beast. Actually only one point in it, but it's still pretty good at level one. Just too much damage. That's two... There's just the tier twos bottom and mid left. The map gets a little bit smaller and a little bit more claustrophobic for Orange. Yep. And Pika has his uh, Tranquil Woods and Aqual up. He's probably going to go for BKB next. I'm not sure. It might even be a Manta. But they're going to try and get Roshan early as, as soon as possible. They can easily do it with the with the Beastmaster. And G already has his Blink Dagger. He has Blink Treads, Wand, or not. Yeah, there's a Magic Stick at 9 minutes in. So it's going to be hard for... Um, Right now, it's going to be hard for them to defend any of the towers. G's is going to blink in with and roar someone, and they're going to go in Eclipse and do a, a ton of damage. And I love this, the blink dagger, because of the way the game's developing. Like, if, if Orange had all of their towers up, it probably wouldn't be that effective. But when they're when they're so far behind on map control, it just gets really easy to set up these team fights. Here's the disruption on TA to start this fight off, but the tower will be denied by 1437. Nice job by that support Shadow Demon in Blink's G. He wants to go on Ice Ice Ice. He sees that low HP Lifestealer and not going to be able to find him just yet. Meanwhile, well, they're trying to push out top. Yamate does have a hand to Midas. I, I think he got this around the 8 minute mark, something like that. Uh, maybe the 9 minute mark, but even so, it's not incredibly fast for Midas. Especially out of here like Alchemist. And 
Well, uh, actually, it might have been a bit earlier than that because he does have another thousand gold. I don't know, Sam. Do you do you think there's any chance for Arms to kind of get back into this game? You got to figure LGD is going to be going for Roche fairly soon. Uh, they can't be far off of the core items, things like the mech, maybe the pipe. Uh, within the next five minutes, I expect most of them will be up. So, what do you do if you're Arms right now? I guess they're they're doing what they can do right now. The uh, Yamath is just farming around with his level four acid spray, and have no idea what Ice is doing. He's just going around and dying. <laughs> but it's pretty comical. He is level 7. I mean, he's not just dying, but he, he hasn't gotten really as much farm as you would like. That's certainly fair. Uh, yeah, man, and Nakes can't really do much versus the heroes they have, especially if he's under farmed. I mean, Beastmaster's a pretty good hero versus Nakes, I hear. And, no, yeah, they're going to go for Roche. I think Misery has his mech. Uh, yeah, he has his mech on the chicken. So whenever that comes to him, it's 11 minute mech on a Chen. It's all because of the towers. And they've got the point in Inner Beast, they've got at least a couple points. In fact, three points of Lunar Blessing, not going for any points in Glaive. Uh, we've seen Joe likes to go for that, but when, when IGs run the Luna, it's a little bit less aggressive with the level of pushing they're doing. Uh, Pygat's just going all in for the plus damage, just wants to knock down the towers as quickly as possible, not interested in solo farming, and this Roche is going to drop uncontested. Now, Orange is getting some farm up. I feel like you have to get a blink on Extinct. You just need a big black hole to turn this game around. I don't know if it'll be enough, but he's not that far off. Well, they're, uh, they're, they're holding on for, for the moment, and I say that, but it's 12 minutes in. <laughs> this is not yeah. a good position to be I in mean, for Orange. I mean, they still can't really do anything. They can't push towers at all. I mean, I'm just waiting for LGD to just go as 5 and push mid, which the, the, obviously their next goal is. And Orange, they have they have heroes that want to farm, but they don't have amazing split push. I mean, TA is not a great tower killer. She's decent. Alchemist is a good creep killer. Oh, bottom lane, they want to go into Brax. Will they black hole just for this? They will. They're going to kill him off, I believe. Maybe not. There's the Infest and the Hand of God trying to turn this around. Brax dropping really low ice. One more auto attack. Barely claims the kill, but at what cost as Pycat comes and cleans him up? And they just blew a black hole. One of their best abilities to discourage the push. In fact, they may lose Extinct while they're at it. G is here, has the roar if he needs it. I don't think he wants to use it yet. He'll pop the regen, doesn't need it. The Lucent Beam is enough to clean up that kill. And with Black Hole down, what stands between LGD and their first set of racks? Or at least these tier twos. But at what cost? <laughs> I had to throw it in there, man. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, Yamata actually pretty farmed. He's up to 2,500. I wonder if he's gonna go next. Maybe the Shadow Blade. I love my Shadow Blade Alchemist, but probably not. But it looks like 1437 is going to get cut off. He dodges the Ice Path. <laughs> he is very dead. Uh, he lives longer than you expect, but he will go down to the end. That was a full one, but not enough. KYXY now gets Roared, has a fresh set of refraction, and the Ice Path on two. Nice Ice Path by Ice, and it might be enough to keep his team safe, or maybe not. Here comes the Surge. There is an Iron Shell burning Ice down. Everybody else has retreated towards the eastern side of the map, but Ice will be the lone casualty. Trading supports, not a bad trade at this point, I gotta say, but not really a game-breaky one either. Ice 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 on the bottom lane wants to go on Misery. Looks like he took quite a bit of damage. There will be a Rage, and this should be the death, or maybe not the back. Come on, man. Oh, they're all so tanky. Nobody will die in fact. It's two more kills for LGD, and that early mech just absolutely ruining them, as well as the quick hand of God. Yeah, yeah I have no idea what um, Orange can do at this point. Their, their only I build uh, carry is his Alchemist, and he's up to 3.8k soon, so he's gonna have that Radiance or Relic. He is farming insanely fast, and despite all the towers, he is the highest farm near in the game. But he's an alchemist. Well, I think, that, I I think mean, that's expected when you have an alchemist. But I, I'm, I'm, he's not going to do anything versus what? Shadow Demon? Just one purge and then one soul catcher and he's just going to melt. Right, plus the, he's got very low base armor and you've got Luna and Inner Beast. So everybody's going to be hitting hard. Yeah. So, I mean, I have no idea what Orange was trying to do with these picks anyways. So it's pretty weird. But well, I guess they're trying. Um, uh, Ice, uh, Ice has, I mean, Extinct has his mech soon. So that's probably a positive for them. Well, it'll help. They do have a decent amount of physical damage on on LGD. I, I think it'll slow this down a little bit, but... I mean, for me, you've got to hit a big black hole, or you're just not winning a fight. You're not defending your racks without it. 
I don't know if it's enough, but I, I just don't think there's a plan B. Well, they're going to try to defend this. I think he just got to forfeit the tower, loose and beam onto Ice Ice Ice. They don't have the Alchemist here. He can't really do a whole lot right now. The tower will drop uncontested. They're just giving everything up right now. And when they try to fight, it usually ends rather poorly. Here comes the push. The tornado leading the charge. Going on to Ice. Ice taking some good damage from that tornado. Well, starting to, anyway. Will be driven off the tower. And now the tower under siege. The creep's coming in as well. Working on it. Chopping away. And they're not even really committing their heroes. G's just sitting back. They're a little bit more bunched up than I would like. Without, with no blink dagger on the Enigma, you don't really have to worry about a big black hole. Ice, ice, ice oh. dropping low. Yamato actually bought up Vanguard with all that gold. So, so he rushed to Midas to go back for Vanguard. Well, that's definitely not a common build, but... Yeah, I actually have no idea about that. I don't know, maybe he see, realizes he needs to be tank and just the naked Radiance is not going to do anything, but What's I doubt this? a Vanguard's going to help at this point, too. Well, they know they need to fight now, so perhaps that's the logic. And they go into Brax. Disruption on the Twin-Headed Dragon. They want to bring down KYX so quickly. Vacuum it onto three and the Eclipse wall. Oh, boy. Well, you said there was nothing to stop this push, and it certainly looks like it. This has to be just one of the most one-sided games of Asian Dota. I've cast it a long time, and uh, I don't know. <laughs> I think I think if they... Oh, one more kill for Pycat. Triple for him. I feel like this wasn't really... Um, a good gauge of LGD's potential, perhaps, just because Arge drafted so oddly. I, I, but I, I did like how they reacted. They saw Arge were being aggressive uh, with their picks, a bit greedy with them, and, and they punished it immediately. So, showing that killer instinct. Yeah, that's some really good leadership. I, I think 1437 was probably the one making call, the call there to go bottom as soon as he saw the lanes. And they went bottom and they actually tri lane versus the PhD Alchemist in the Enigma. And they, they, could, they, they couldn't do anything at that point. Ice 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 is going in. He's just going to die. Oh, they vacuum in the Enigma. He does have a black hole. Will he choose to use it? Notice how the Beastmaster is always sitting quite far back. Down go the two carries. Not that they're doing a whole lot at this point. Two lanes of Rax in 17 minutes. Ay, ay, ay. This is a beatdown. Yeah, I mean, the goal lead is what's relevant. 12k and it's a GG. Well, that was expected. <laughs> <laughs> Losing two lanes of Rex this early. A little bit too much for Orange. Well, uh, way too much for Orange. They're going to tap out. Of course, it is a best out of three. And, of course, they are playing without Mushi, uh, who, you know, most would agree is a very important player for this squad. Can they bounce back in game two? I, I think one thing's for sure. We're not going to see an Alchemist, a Lifestealer, and a TA. That was just, that was too many heroes that need fun heroes that can't stop the push. And LGD has given them a chase of what they want to do, which is, like you said, is... Get the early items up and start five manning. How do you respond to this kind of aggression from Orange? I feel like maybe a Keeper of the Light is in their future. Maybe a Mag. Definitely not an Alchemist TA or an Aix together. <laughs> Let's hope they don't do that next game. At least for a better possibility. Disrupted and the Soul Catcher. A few more kills before the game officially ends. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Easy peasy. Mm. I mean... So, so you said this, Looney, you view her as a top three carry. Is she worth a ban when you're up against LGD? Because as far as pushing carries go, she's probably one of the best, if not the best. Just because of that aura. Well, the problem is that there's other heroes that are good too, and she's not one of those like ultimate heroes which are just annoying to play versus like a bat or a magnus. So she's probably going to get in soon, especially just because there's only two bans. So I know that LGD would um, first pick it. If, they, if they, it was in the right circumstance, because they love the hero. And they love Chen as well, so we might see, even see a Chen ban. Yeah, it's something that Brax, Brax was even telling me they were, they were loving the Luna, like, I think almost a month ago, back during the middle of G1 League when the team was first created. Pycat's gonna get a double kill wall being black hole. Oh boy. The Cajones on this one. Well, he is quite far ahead, but. You know, it's. E even a month ago, they were loving the hero, and I mean. Still valuing it highly, so it Radiant's seems to be a staple for them. It's early to say. The verdict's still sort of out. I feel like we haven't really seen these two teams play. It's just such an yeah. odd draft. Uh, I think it was pretty troll draft, attack. but I have no idea why they did it. Maybe it's just because they th think they can't win without Mushi, but they have enough. They have their still like five players, right? All these players are in orange, so I don't know about that. 
Well, you know, the life stealer. Th the, I, this is something that I, I think a lot of people have talked about with these sorts of like really cute jungling tactics. Is they're great if the opponents don't punish you elsewhere, but if they do, then you're just a liability. You're a hero who can't contribute to your team while they're pushing down your base in 20 minutes. So. Yeah. Well, I, I guess you can just. I mean, all it comes down to is LGD played really well. Their movement was really good, and they had way better heroes. So. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is your verdict for game number one. I do apologize for all of the immense audio issues. If we have a moment, I will try and sort them out before game number two. I think that their levels are equal. Everything's just a bit low for people's liking. But if we can't get it better for today, just go ahead and turn up your own volume on the stream. Uh, hopefully, we can get it sorted out during the break. But thanks again for tuning in, guys. This is game one. This is your GEST Dota 2 challenge four awesome teams from asia and we have another best out of three coming up after this one is complete but for now this wraps it up for game number one lgd take a very easy game number one and game number two awaits can ard strike back or will the absence of mushi prove too much we'll find out after this